Hey guys, Mark here at Rockin' Walls. Today I'm up here at Balducci Stoneyard picking out some squares and wrecks on my day off, which is Saturday. Sorry for the road noise. Um, obviously right here on the road. But what I wanted to do is there's a lot of different types of you know blue stone squares and wrecks and I wanted to kind of go over that and just show you guys some of the different types. Basically, we have like a thermal, which is where they saw cut it, and then with the saw cuts, they'll then torch it so it's nice and uh, like almost looks like sandpaper. And then you have uh, just natural cleft, which is just the natural stone itself. Then with those two families, you have a uh, full range, which is like a multicolors, all different types of colors. And then you have um, premium uh, or blue blue. There's lots of different names, like I said, for these types of stone, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you those. And then just talk a little bit about the different types of um, things that I'm thinking about when I'm picking out my patterns for the blue stone and uh, looking with different types of stone I'm looking for specifically because I bet all my stones on natural uh, like just dry laid with uh, number eights which is like a three eights stone a washed stone I don't use stone dust and I don't put mine on mortar so you can buy um, blue stone or you know patterns you can buy kits already pre-done like well, number ones or number twos are pretty common a lot of stone yards sell those but I like to get thicker stones when I'm putting them down and especially now that I'm using the Grabo which I'll show you that tool also that's just a real total game changer and if you're not setting larger patterns with uh, with a tool you should really look into the Grabo I'll have links with that uh, and then you can also find it on my store so let's get into the video so starting off this is a thermal palette and you can see just the uh, textures here it's nice and smooth so once again they saw cut and you can tell you know saw cuts are it looks like this this is a saw cut right there and they come back with the torch using an oxygen or propane or oxygen and acetylene and uh, then they just torch the whole surfaces in order to get this nice even smooth texture now the nice thing with these is typically these stones here are actually gauged so they're actually the same thickness when you go to put those down your production can be a lot quicker because you're working with the same size thickness of stones now this palette here is a full range which means it has all the different colors but if this were if you were to look at individual stones such as like a palette of premium it might be just like one color blue and all the same like a really really bright blue and that's what would be referred to as premium multi this is a great example of multi and that's why I wanted to show this palette you can see the variety of the the browns mixed in with the with the blues a little bit more green a little bit more green and then a little bit more blue and then same thing here with this palette so once again this is a thermal and these are multi or full range once again there's lots of different types of names and you can even see when they torch them the stones are going to react differently so this has also been thermal but you can see just uh just how you know the texture comes out on that but the thicknesses are all actually the same for the most part same thicknesses which makes production much quicker when you're uh, laying them on a bed of material so these do cost more of course now before we move on i just wanted to take this moment also to show you what premium blue or blue blue looks like so these palettes once again these are all this for the most part in the same color family and there's no real changes in colors you might have a small amount of change but for the most part they're almost all equal in their colors so this is the most expensive of the blue stone on the market here we have another type of blue stone which i failed to mention this would be the third in the family this is a tumbled blue stone pattern squares and wrecks this is a byproduct of salt and thermal so the nice thing is all the thicknesses are pretty much the same what happens is if they have damaged corners, as you can see on the larger one there, it allows them to take these products and put them through a tumbler and give them nice rounded edges so that basically they can sell these as a tumble blue stem. Now these pieces or these patterns or these kits are much smaller in sizes, so they're a lot closer to like sizes of bricks. So this is just another great example of a product. This makes the third, so you have the natural clef, the saw and thermal, and then you have the tumbled. Okay, so we're now over at the natural clef, and uh, you can tell with the natural clef. I mean, this is this is just a an extreme uh, example of uh, natural clef. 
but for the most part you know you just have the natural surfaces and this is basically just take a loaf of bread and, and slice it down this is more or less when it comes out of the mountain they just peel it apart and you just have the natural faces of the stone so uh, that's natural now this is uh, this is full range you can see the colors here of the full range which means it's the or multi and that's a variety of different colors and I prefer that because of um, it just gets a little bit more pop now a lot of people don't like to use these because there are lots of different types of thicknesses and this palette back here is a great example you can see the range and uh, we'll get into that in a second here but same thing with the natural clef two color options the um, blue blue or premium which would be just a palette of all the same we'll walk down here and take a look at some of the uh, the different examples and we can also see a palette of thermal now some of these are actually the kits now, these two right here happen to be kits kits like I said typically uh, like number one kit number two kits there are smaller patterns and smaller pieces but you know when you get a kit you just you're working with what you have and what someone is pretty much chosen for you and while that's great definitely save time I personally like to pick out my own stones specifically now right here we have the thermal so this is a great example of the full range or multi and you can see these and this one is actually most likely a premium because they all look to be about the same color but look at the uh, consistencies and thicknesses of these stones so once again this is blue blue or premium this would be uh, multi or full range same thing and then these the different kits and you can see with the kits for the most part these kits are really nice because they're about the same thicknesses for the most part so let's get into exactly what I'm looking for when I'm picking out my stone so let's talk about that next here okay, I'm going to be in and out of the frame here but a couple things for example so what I'm looking for in a stone is I like to get thicker ones this is an S thick but I would work with this I'm also then looking at my faces so this one has a very unusual very uh, very difficult surface to work with but all stones typically have one nice face and look how nice and smooth that face is so that that I would possibly pick the other thing I'm looking for is or I don't really worry about too much don't like is if I see like major major fracture lines I try to avoid those because if I'm hammering with my eight pound uh, hammer sometimes they'll actually uh, they might break apart so I may sometimes avoid that depending on the condition of the stone and thickness the other thing I don't really worry about too much is a lot of times you'll see like these orange marks that's when they're uh, cutting their patterns it's a spray paint that's gonna come off so I don't I don't lose sleep over those The uh, chisel marks that's that's to be expected basically at the quarry they're trying to take off the high spots so they might chisel mark it I have a little another video just talking about uh, patterns and what consumers can think about when they're you know getting natural stone I mean it's natural stone it's cut by human that's the other thing to point out is when you put your patterns down they're not always perfectly cut so sometimes your patterns might not be perfectly square Color ranges, I love to look for different colors, but uh, for myself, I just try to avoid stones that are too thin for myself. Now this is, if I if I had to, I, I would use this, but I would prefer to use a stone with a little bit more meat to it. So something a little bit thicker like this for uh, bedding on dry lead. Uh, once again, looking for colors. And then also a lot of times too if you find your nice surface whatever it may be you want to check to make sure there's no no fracture cracks sometimes you'd be surprised but if you look you'll see on the side a, a crack and if you look hard you'll see where the crack comes through and what happens is you start to go ahead and get that set with your hammer you might break off an edge so make sure you also whenever you're getting your kits or getting your pieces get you know extra stones 
maybe get some bigger pieces that would work with whatever your pattern is so you can cut them down if you have to piece them in. So, uh, I think that pretty much covers the majority of things that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and start picking out my kit here. And uh, if I think of something else, I'll chime in. Now I mentioned earlier the uh, Grabo, and this tool is absolutely awesome. Total game changer. If you don't have one, you should definitely add one to your uh, list of tools if you're setting a lot of flat stones. That does work with the natural cleft. Uh, this is one of the uh, first models. The newer model is really nice. Looking to get one of those soon because it will turn on and turn off. But basically, the Grabo can lift up to 376 pounds. This is great because then you can just like, you know, lift up your stones. So it really makes setting the stones really nice. And then also, if you're at a stone yard, moving the stones maybe off the pallets. So something I highly recommend for any professionals and homeowners. And these typically come in around. $250 give or take so uh, it's current market price total game changer natural stone they say can lift up to about 176 but the nice thing is this for setting pattern pieces as long as you got a nice smooth surface for the most part if you have a high spot it doesn't work so great but definitely the way to go when you're setting larger patterns or just really any stone for that matter red button releases it green button turns it on little uh, gauge here it tells you what your pressure is on off and then just a uh, battery right here so this one comes came with two batteries which is really nice it comes with the strap too but i actually haven't really used the strap too much so the grabo suction device tool example we have here to talk about when you're looking at your stones you want to look to see which is your good face now this clearly is not my good this is not my good face look at that that's probably a fossil right there so if you want to flip it over take a look at this which hopefully this would be a good face first glance it doesn't look too bad but hopefully you can see that that's knocked out so you know something like this where a corner might be chipped out it shows up in a pattern, so I would probably avoid this stone in my kit. This would be one that I would not pick out. What we have here is another example of one that's plating out. So this is the better, better of the two faces, but that's a lot of chisels, chisel marks. This is really pretty rough. So if this was my good face, good face. Anyway, you can see what's happening here is everything can show up but that's my good face and if i have to start hitting it there's a beautiful little small little fracture crack right here at the very top so if i start hitting this down this is just gonna it's gonna peel right off so if that crack was maybe further down on the bottom i wouldn't really care but being the top surface if i start hitting that that's gonna probably come off at some point so i would avoid a fracture crack that's so close to the top surface Another thing to consider, and this is not really a great example, but it came to my mind, is curved stones. So sometimes you may have a stone that's actually curved. So it either it, it either rolls like this way or it it rolls like this way. So you know, so this is kind of going like this, um, and that's just something to be mindful of because when you're setting your your patterns, your your 
your snow ends next to each other, you're matching your corners. And when you have a corner that's down, it can be really challenging because it can throw, you know, just throw you off or just look obvious. So one more thing, curved stones, which you will find with natural clay. So right here we have an example of a fracture crack in the middle of the stone. And like I said, a lot of times if you're looking at your edges, you'll see them on the edge. And then if you look hard enough, you'll see where they come through. This one's pretty darn obvious. So, you know, that would be a stone that you start hitting it with the hammer, it's bound to break. So great for an outside corner if you needed a scrap. A lot of times uh, stone yards will sell these at like a discounted price, uh, but you just have to ask. Here we have another example of actually a saw mark into the stone right here. So that would be something else you'd want to avoid. Now, I haven't looked over to see what the other side of the stone looks like, but this surface here is perfect. But if you saw saw marks on either side or it came into your stone itself, you'd want to avoid that. Here we have another example of a saw cut. Now this is the bottom and it goes, it goes pretty deep. So the problem with this, as you can see how deep it goes, if you start basically hammering on this, you run the risk of it breaking right on that line. So something like that, you may want to avoid if it's a deep cut. Well, this concludes this portion of this video. We thank you for taking the time to make it all the way through and watch it. If you found this information helpful, take the time to uh, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, support our Amazon shop. All the information for like the Grabo and other things are right there. So I'll put a link to that. And, um, you know, leave a comment if there's something that you saw or, or something that I missed. You know, this is blue stone, which comes out in New York, PA. It's a quarried stone. There's a lot of different types of stone that are sawed and uh, thermaled from different parts of the country. So a lot of this information will cross over, uh, not just because it's bluestone, it's specific, but things to consider. And once again, at the very end, I'll put a list of those, the two different types of stone and then the different things that you might want to consider when you're picking out stone. And you may have noticed, but the, uh, the thermal stone for the most part, that's pretty, minus maybe seeing a, a, a crack or a chip. Um, that stone, for the most part, there's not a lot of choices or things you have to consider. Really, the uh, natural cleft is uh, something that you have to look at carefully. All right, see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.